hey, I got a great way. Do you hate your job, people? I'm going to be a bit of a pitch man today. Hey, man, do you hate your job? Do you go in there thinking if I have to fucking walk through those goddamn doors one more time, I I think I'm going to stick my head through the plate glass window? Like me back in the day when I said I'd make a pie. I rep fucking stealing from my own act here. Um, Just tell people you have COVID. Get yourself 10 days off. You know, two of those will be a weekend day. Just tell people you have COVID. Nobody asks to see the test result. Ah, I can't come in. I got COVID. You sound all right. Yeah, I'm asymptomatic, but, well, you better stay home until you have know, you know, a test negative. All they want to see is a negative test. Stay the fuck home. Sorry, I just got back from, uh, from France. I guess COVID, like Hulk Hogan's p- pythons, are running wild. What are you going to do when COVID comes and gets you? Somebody told me, hey, if you get it, man, take uh, they got a new drug out there, man. It's called Paxlovid. And I was like, I'm not taking that shit. And they said, why not? I said, because it rhymes with the disease. <laughs> it rhymes with the virus. I'm not fucking taking that shit. You know, got pneumonia, take uh, Splavonia. Wait a minute. My wife goes, uh, <laughs> she goes, you got shingles? Take Pringles. Why does it rhyme with the disease? Well, because it's a virus. Part of the virus has to be in there. It's part of the cure. I have no idea. But I was just thinking, you know, when I got the COVID back in uh, January there, I, um, you know, first of all, I didn't even know I fucking had it. That was a great thing. I didn't even know I fucking had it. Because I went out and, and I got that microchip shot into my body. Pax Lovett, everybody. Hey, with a name with, that rhymes with COVID, it has to be good. <laughs> Bold, the cure for the common cold. Prancer, do you have cancer? Take Prancer. Um, I will not. See, now look how dumb that is. Just think about that. I will not fuck with a medicine if it rhymes with what I'm trying to cure with. Cure. All right? That's the level of intellect you're dealing with here, people. Um, I've actually had a great couple of days since I've been back here in the United States of America. Um, I got that new, uh, that new Porcupine Tree album. And uh, I broke down that whole first song. Now, I can't play a lot of the shit that he's playing, but I at least know what the band is doing. And I was able to figure out the second half. Remember I was saying on the last podcast, if you didn't listen, that that first song's in five, and then when they get to the chorus, they play uh, three against four until beat four, and then he does a fill on the end of four, crashes on the one, and then it repeats. Then there was this other sort of, uh, I don't know what what the musical term is for it, uh, phrase or whatever that they play towards the end of the song that was really, really fucking me up. And I'm like, what in the fuck are they doing? And I finally figured it out last night. Um, They play three against four again. I don't know if it's in this bridge section, but they do it uh, with eighth, eighth notes. So um, they're doing hits every third eighth, eighth note. So it's the one and then the end of two and then the four, et cetera, for three bars before it comes back around to the one. Um, like, dude, I'm going to fucking sit down and I'm going to write this song out. I'm going to get this fucking song down. I don't know why. Probably because I have a bunch of other shit going on in my life and this is a nice fucking distraction that this is what I'm going to do. Um but the first one is three against four, uh, counting in sixteenth notes. So it's one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I just lost everybody on the podcast except for drummers, and all the drummers are like, "Um, that's not what he's doing. Actually, he's playing a herda, okay, and he's playing it on the snare, between the snare and his right hand on the floor tom. That's what he's doing, and then he's playing a ghost note." with his left hand that comes off the hi-hat pedal, and he has one of those cowbells. Um, I've been watching a bunch of those uh, bunch of those drum videos and shit. I really like the uh, prog metal stuff. Anybody got a, some good bands I can listen to when it comes to that shit? I know, I know um, 
as far as just like the sickest metal you're ever going to hear, Meshuggah, I guess, has a new fucking album. My drum teacher was telling me, he said, it's just, it's insane. So if he says it's insane, I know it's insane. So I got to get that. But does anybody just have like, um, you know, I can't listen to that rah, 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 all the fucking time, you know? Or maybe my ears just aren't like accustomed to it yet. Like Meshuggah is like one of the few bands like that that I can uh, I can listen to. Uh, like I I don't know shit about that kind of metal. Like I go like giant leaps through decades. It's like the '90s was Pantera, the 2000s was Lamb of God. Somewhere around there, I've heard of Meshuggah, and that's as far as I go. Um, a little bit of Slipknot. And now, like, I, I don't know, I've just been getting into double bass again, and I've been watching um, people doing covers of uh, some of their songs, and beyond the drums being unbelievable, is uh, I actually am listening, I'm like, I fucking like that song. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? The only thing is, is when I put that shit on, my wife just looks at me like, you know, I understand, like, you know. It's a white person. You play that around a black person. I think they, oh God, this person's in a hate group. <laughs> oh, can you tell the gun nut to fucking turn the goddamn music down? I did read a, I read a book this year. Wilmington's Lie. You got to check that one out, which has now gotten me like, I want to read about the 1800s in this country and I don't want to fucking read the bullshit that I already heard. And when I, when I was coming up in, in uh, school, when I was just a lad, right? Way back when, when I would finish milking the cows and the goats, I would walk to school, run past Uncle Touchy's house. Um, I completely forgot what the fuck I was talking about. When I used to go to school, oh, history class. I painted such a vivid picture. I was thinking about Galway, Ireland, doing that Irish, little, that portable Irish accent, and how they had like some fucking goddamn place where they would send non-married and pregnant young women to have their kids so they wouldn't bring shame to their freckled family and uh you know these nuns didn't know what the fuck they were doing and a lot of times the babies died and they just fucking stuck them in this all the dead babies they stuck them in this fucking (laughs) i don't know what underground something and then one day they just found them all um and you know the irish they probably somehow found some humor in it Right, how many fucking dead babies does it take to run a fucking... Um, anyway, so when I was a kid, when they would teach history, every fucking year they would start with Columbus, sailed the ocean blue in 1492, and then somewhere they would get to the Declaration of Independence, and that was it. That was fucking it. And there was no talk about slavery. There was no talk about anything. Maybe we get into the... French and Indian War. I think one time we got all the way up to the uh, War of 1812, but there was nothing about the Civil War, nothing about slavery, nothing about what we did to uh, Indians, Native Americans, whatever the fuck you're supposed to call them, Um, whatever the proper terminology is. Um, So a long time ago, I read that People's History of the United States, which was just way on the other side. I was just like, this is what really happened, man. George Washington, everybody loves him. That guy had his fucking dick out, man. That guy had his powdered wig on his fucking dick going, who's licking these revolutionary nuts? That's what really happened, man. So that was all the way to the other side. So I feel like I got to like, I don't know, read a little bit of both, you know? Because it's kind of like a sporting event. If your team, if you listen to the people's team that lost, they're like, Um, I'm really oversimplifying all of this. So anyway, I wrote, I read that book. And in the book, they said one of the things that was scaring the Hawites was uh, the Nat Turner uh, slave revolt. So it was like, I'm going to fucking read a book on that. Um, I'm going to fucking uh, check that out. And it already seems like it has a really, like the backstory. It's like a Marvel movie, but it's too intense. It was basically that when Nat Turner was a kid, he saw some white dude come in and, and rape his mother. 
And then he just, it was like the Batman story, but with rape. And he was just like, fuck it. All right, I'm oversimplifying. I'm going to read the book. And then I'll give, um, I'll give you my, uh, my version of it as I. <laughs> there's that. And then there's another book I want to read. Jim Cat, K-A-A-T, My Eight Decades in Baseball. I want to read that one, too. Because I remember as a kid collecting baseball cards, and I had him his card when he, I think he was on the St. Louis Cardinals or something, or maybe the Yankees, I don't know, but I flipped the card over, and he had been in the league for so damn long, there was no room for any information uh, of like where he went to college, where he played, you know, it was just the smallest type I'd ever seen. He played in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and into the 80s. He had a 20-plus year career. I think his first year was 1959. I might have even talked about this. So I want to read that one too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read like hardcore history and then an athlete's autobiography. You know what I mean? That's what I'm doing, to try to balance it out. All right? Because I kind of liked when I was reading and I got away from my cell phone, you know? And I didn't keep getting that message like, this is the most cell phone time you've used in the history of you using it. It's just like, who is tracking this shit? Who's talking to me right now? 